Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about active recall and spaced repetition. You may have heard of those things, possibly know that it's good for you, or possibly not even know at all what they are. So in this video, I'll be talking about what is active recall, what is spaced repetition, how to use them, and how to kind of combine them together to make the most effective learning plan possible. And if you're new to my channel, my name's Abian. I'm a final year medical student studying in London. So with that being said, let's get started talking about active recall. So active recall is an active method of study, but in order to understand that, let's just talk about what passive methods are and then compare it to active recall. So a passive method of studying would be things like reading your book, or just watching a video, anything where you're just absorbing information and you're not really doing work to dig out information from the depths of your brain. Essentially, using passive methods, you might just be consuming information and even things like making notes is a very passive way of learning. And I used to do this myself all the time in previous years before I discovered active recall, which is where instead of just passively reading or making notes, you're trying to recall information from your brain. So this might be things like by trying to answer questions from a question bank, you're trying to think through things and trying to recall facts in your mind. So practicing using a question bank is a good way of doing active recall. Another good way is by using flashcards where you're basically asked a certain question and then you have to try and answer that question based on you trying to recall information in your mind. And you might think, okay, how can I use this for learning if I don't have any information in my mind to recall in the first place? Well, I've made videos on how to to effectively learn using this active recall method so you can check the videos out once you've watched this but an example is using the Feynman technique so for example what this means is when you're learning try and understand the information in a way where you're as if you're teaching a 10 year old child so what this will involve is using very simple words and just understanding the detail of the problem in depth to be able to explain it to a child because oftentimes what we'll find is we might use jargon we might think that we know a certain piece of information, but if we ask ourselves, okay, why? Then we may not fully have understood that information. So by learning it in a way where we try and explain it to a child to make sure they understand, shows that we've learned the information to a great enough depth that we fully understand the information to be able to teach others. And you know, you don't literally have to go out and find a 10 year old child to do this to. You can literally practice this in a mirror, looking at yourself and just talking your thoughts out loud Loud, making sure you understand each concept and are able to explain it in layman's terms. And yes, as per the name, this is a lot more, a lot harder and requires a lot more effort than passive methods. And so it might kind of create a bit of resistance and it might just be difficult because you've been so used to writing notes before or just reading. This requires a lot of mental work, but by actually doing that, it shows that you're growing and you're stretching your brain and it's actually working. Just like if you go to the gym and do weights that don't really challenge you, don't really expect to grow your muscles, whereas if you do weights that physically hard and challenge you, then you have a higher chance of actually causing that muscle to undergo hypertrophy because you're putting a lot of strain in it. In a similar way, this is kind of like a mental workout because you're trying to recall that information and yes, it's hard and yes, it's a lot more work, but it's actually a much more efficient way of learning. And so, okay, what about spaced repetition? What is that all about? So I'll give you the analogy of of cramming for an exam, right? I've done cramming for an exam multiple times and you probably have if you're watching this video as a student who's done exams for, you know, we will know that information, if we cram it, it will work to a certain extent and we will know that information and the day of the exam will be able to kind of uh, use some of that information to answer the questions. But a week after the exam, will you still remember that information? And the answer is no. I know for a fact that if I were to take the same exam I took, you know, two years ago, I will not pass right now because I may have crammed that information in just before the exam and I haven't revisited that information in a long time so it's not in my memory it's not in my mind and the reason for that is because you know, this is a very simplistic way of explaining how the brain works but essentially if you don't use that piece of information your brain will literally slowly forget it over time and go okay he's not using that information so he probably doesn't need it so let's just get rid of it and so what happens when you learn that information the rate at which you forget that information 
important when you learn an information for the first time is very high. If you don't use that information in a short amount of time, your brain will go, okay, why am I gonna put that information from my short-term memory into my long-term memory? I don't need it, so it's just gonna quickly like forget it. However, if you revisit that information, your brain will go, okay, right, he's using that information, he might need it, let's just not forget it for a bit longer. And so what will happen is that rate of forgetting will decrease, meaning that it will take your brain a longer amount of time for you to forget that information. Essentially, you will have flattened the forgetting curve. And so if you've ever heard of the forgetting curve, that's exactly what that is. When you learn information for the first time, your brain will slowly forget it. But if you revisit that information after a certain interval of time, the rate at which you forget it will decrease so that you have a longer scope to leave that information for slightly longer before you revisit it. Because every time your brain is holding on to that information for slightly longer amount of time each time you revisit it. So I don't know if I did a good job explaining that or if, that may, if that's a bit confusing, but in practicality what that actually means is that you should visit an information for the first time and revisit that information very quickly because your forgetting curve is going to be quite steep at this point so let's say you study something on a Monday you revisit that same topic on the Tuesday but then now after that Tuesday you can space that interval out and maybe revisit that same topic after three days and then again after a week and then again after two weeks so by doing this you're slowly increasing the interval at which you repeat that same amount of information. So you can do that manually by using a calendar or just basic pen and, pen and paper to work out your schedule. However, if you use things like flashcards, this is where the concept of active recall and spaced repetition are neatly tied together. So by using the Anki flashcards, you're essentially being quizzed on a topic, so that tests your active recall. And then based on whether you get that information right or wrong, it will show you that information in increasing intervals of time. So if you keep getting that information, it will show you that information in let's say a day. And if you get it right again, it will show you in a couple of days, then a week, then two weeks, or whatever the interval of the algorithm is based on your setting. So, and then if you get that information wrong, it will show you that piece of information more frequently to make sure you've learned it a bit more. And so it's got an algorithm built in where it makes use of both active recall and space repetition at the same time. And all you have to do as a user is do your due diligence by making good flashcards and making sure you do your Anki reviews every single day. So if you wanna know how to actually make effective flashcards, I've made a video on that already so check that out below and if you're wondering what settings to use I've also made a video on that luckily enough but if you're completely new to Anki and don't even know what it's about or how to get started I've made an entire playlist on Anki so check that out if you haven't already so I've talked I've referred to a lot of videos so I'll probably put some boxes or whatever and then links in the description below but I hope this video has been helpful in you clarifying what these terms kind of mean if you're new to my channel then consider subscribing and check out my newsletter link in the description below as well with that being said thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you again in my next video